join me here on the show today. On today's episode, we're looking at, you guessed it, again, you guys are so awesome, Topaz Studio 2. We're still looking at the creative filter section inside of Topaz Studio 2. Today, we're looking at the quad tone filter. This is a really cool filter for um, toning your images. So come along and let's find out about the quad tone filter. Well, let's give this nice little elephant a quad tone. Let's get started. We're in Photoshop here. I'm using uh, Topaz Studio 2 as a plugin. So let's come up here to, oh, before I do that, let's duplicate our background layer. Command J on a Mac, Control J in a PC, because you never want to work in your background layer. You want to work as non-destructively as you can. So now that we've done that, let's come up to Filter. Let's go down to Topaz Studio and find Topaz Studio 2. Click on that and away we go. Hey, look, we have a new picture. We have a flower. The parrot is gone, but I like that parrot, but hopefully we'll like the flower. All right, so let's get started here. So let's come up to Add Filter and come the whole way down here into the Creative section and down into Quad Tone. Looks like we only have two more in this section, Text and Vignette. But today it is all about Quad Tone. So let's give it a click. And you see all the normal things here, the opacity slider, the blend modes, the presets, the icon to save a preset. If you make a preset or make a, an adjustment that you like, you can save it as a preset. And then we have the trash can to, to delete any presets that we don't want anymore. All right. So right here we have a strength slider and we have these um, four drop downs here. We have black shadow, highlight, and white, encompassing these tones of the image, the black tones, the shadow tones, the highlight tones, and the white tones. All right, so let's take the strength slider and pull it up and see what happens here. Let's pull it up a good bit so we can really see what's going on here. All right, as you can see right there, we've added these particular tones to the different parts of our image here. Uh, let's start with the black tones. Let's click on the black tones, and when we do, the little color wheel comes up here. All right, and you can see this is the color that is chosen right here. And it looks like it's in the blue tones, because you can see blue right here. So we can drag this slider here. This will be the dark side of the tones here, and this will be the lighter tones. So you'll notice the dark tones will start getting lighter, and you'll see that blue tint on there. Now, of course, we can come up to the color wheel and click on this little target, and we can move this around to any color that we want, depending what mood we're in today, what kind of a look we want. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with some blue tones here. Now, if you drag this target more to the outer ring here, you're going to add extra saturation to that blue color. If you pull into the center, you're going to remove saturation from it. So maybe right around in there in that section looks really good right there. And then we can adjust the luminance slider here. So if we want to make that lighter, we can lighten it up or we can darken it. So just adjust it to where you say, hmm, I kind of like that tone right there. All right. We don't have to click OK here. We can just come here to shadow. Let's go to our next tone shadow here and click that. And now this is where the shadow tone sits. Now we can drag this all around into the different tones of the image. I'm thinking maybe a warmer tone. Now there's green there. We're coming into warmer tones, more into like sepia tones. And of course I can give it more saturation or less saturation. Maybe somewhere in that area looks pretty nice. And of course we have the luminance slider here. We can make that tone darker or we can make it lighter. So just find a spot that you like and stop there. I kind of like it right there. Now let's go to our highlight tone. So click on that. And now again, the target tool, we can move it. Let's find a nice uh, tone for our highlights. There's pink, I'm not feeling that too much. Go into more pinker tones. We can come into bluer tones. Bluer tones are kind of nice. Let's come up into cyans and teals somewhere in here. And I kind of maybe like that tone, maybe somewhere right around in there. And then of course we can adjust its uh, luminance value here. We can make it darker or lighter. Let's just add a little bit of it there. I think that's looking really, really nice. Now I got to tell you, there's no real whites in this image. So when I click on the white tones here, the lightest area is right here. I still don't think that's going to get affected, but let's just see. Just watch right in here and see if anything changes when I move this. Yeah, it does. So there's our white tone right in there. There's not much white tone. So I wouldn't want it to look pink. So let's just uh, kind of, let's get more into that teal type tone to match the other 
tone I used. So maybe right around in there. So that's looking pretty good. Now I can click OK here and that'll get rid of the color wheel. Now we have the strength slider. So again, we can pull it up the whole way or we can pull it off the whole way. Now we can just apply strength till we get the look that we like. And I'm thinking maybe right in there. That looks really nice right in there. And of course, don't forget we have the opacity slider so we can pull this the whole way off and maybe just slowly build it up and stop at the point that we like. And I'm thinking right there. Let's come to the center of the image and click with a left click of the mouse and we'll see the before and the after. What do you think? I think that looks really nice. Now let's turn this into a black and white and see what we can do with toning a black and white image. We'll do that next. The first thing we want to do is come up to the quad tone filter. Let's just uh, delete it by clicking on this trash can icon and delete that uh, quad tone filter. Now let's come up to add filter and let's come down to black and white. And I'm not even going to mess with adjusting this black and white because I think that looks really nice right there. I'm just going to leave it right there. All right, so I'm going to come up to add filter and let's come down to quad tone and let's see what we can do with this uh, black and white image. All right, so let's start by taking our strength slider and pulling it up and we'll take the colors that it's defaulted with and then we'll go from there. So maybe up in that area right there. And actually that looks pretty cool. So, but we're going to alter that and I'll show you how this works again. So let's go to the black tones first. Okay. So let's pull this luminance slider here and move it to the left so we can see these darker tones in here. Now let's find a tone that we like. Let's, it's an elephant. So let's, Let's warm him up a little bit. Let's go into our more sepia type tones up in here. I don't want to go real red there and I don't want to add a whole lot of color to it, but maybe right in there. And that's only targeting the really black tones right there. And of course, let's move this lumen slider again. Okay, as you can see, there's that little sepia look onto the dark areas there. So let's just pull that back a little bit, just add a little bit of that in there, right there. So now let's work on our next tone. Let's go to shadows. All right, now let's see what we want to do with our shadows. So the elephant's going to mainly be in the shadow tone area. So I want to move him up into the sepia tones. All right, so I'm going to pull him up into the sepia tones. It's a little too red. We can give him more color or saturation. Let's Mm, it helps to whisper here too. All right, right about, uh, right about, I'm going to say right about there. Now let's play with our luminance slider. I always like to look at this one next and see what I want to do here. So we can give more of that yellowish tone to it. And maybe right about there. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go to our highlight tone. Let's go crazy with our highlight tone. Let's change it. Maybe let's make the highlight tone into the blues or teals. Uh, let's go into, let's give it some more. That might be too much. More into the teals. A little more blue there, maybe right there. Now let's take our luminance slider here and adjust it that way, adjust it back that way. I'm just looking for a nice harmony in this image. And I'm thinking right around there looks good. Now, right here in this white area here, we need to work with that. So let's go to our white tone here and let's find a teal tone to match that. Okay, just to make it look good because we wouldn't want it to have a nice big pink spot in there, would we? I don't think so. So let's fix that. Okay, so maybe right about there. Now let's drag this lumen slider one way or the other and see if we can get it to look just about right. So I'm liking that right there. That looks like a pretty nice uh, toning. Now, the cool thing about this quad tone, we're working with four tones, like a split tone filter would give you just highlights and shadows, but we're working on blacks, shadows, highlights, and whites, which is really nice. So we can get a really much more defined toning to our image. So let's just click OK. Say we're satisfied with the colors we forgot. Click OK there on the color wheel. And then let's take our strength slider. Let's move it the whole way to the right. And that looks really kind of fun. Let's move it back the whole way off. So there it is without any tone. Let's move it up to the right and find a nice little look for our image. I'll take it up even a little further and then I'll come up to my opacity slider because I always like to come to the opacity slider, pull it the whole way off. And then let's just slowly drag it up 
and just stop when our eye says, yes, that's singing to me. As soon as that note hits, right there, let's stop. I like it. I think I hit the right note. And I'm almost at 100%. So that's looking pretty good. So if I click in the center of the picture, you'll see the color image. Okay, so I'm going to left click here in the center. There's the color image. But if I really want to see what it looks like, the comparison between this tone and the black and white original, we'd have to come up to this layer that says quad tone and click the eyeball. So there's the before. Click the eyeball again. There's the after. What do you think? And if we're not quite satisfied yet, we can click on quad tone here. And our controls come back up. And I'm thinking, I'm going to pull this opacity slider back a little bit more. Because I'm thinking I went a little overboard. And I think that looks really nice. I'm really satisfied with that. Well, there it is. That's the quad tone filter. I think you really need to give this one a try. I think you're going to love it on black and white. I know you will. And you're going to love it on color too. It's great for like sunsets. It's great for city shots. Hey, it's great for landscapes. It's great for flowers. Well, what isn't it great for? nothing. It's great for everything. So give this one a try. Boy, I was starting to sound like that guy that used to be on those TV commercials. Remember him, Ron Popeil? It slices, it dices. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I get carried away sometimes. Well, anyway, here it is, the quad tone filter. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you liked it, please give it a like, a thumbs up, uh, share it with your friends. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and click that bell notification icon and you'll be informed of all the new training videos that I'm putting out. And I'll see you guys right here in the joy of editing next time with me, your host, Dave Kelly. So long for now.